you want to have some fun? Do you want to go on an art journey with me today? If you do, stay tuned because I have a fun art project in store this week. If you're new here, my name is Paige. I'm the chief pixel pusher and paint brusher over at Gumption. And today we're going to be exploring a door project. So my friend Josh hit me up and asked me if I wanted to be a part of this project. We are painting bathroom stall doors for an elementary school. Uh, they're going to be vibrant and fun. It's going to be a cool community project. So I said, yeah, I want to be a part of that. I'm going to take you through the process of underpainting, how I transferred my concept to the door, how I came up with my concept and how I drew that digitally. And we're going to just go through the whole process. And uh, yeah, let's just get started. I started this project in Procreate with some thumbnails. And I just wanted to kind of sketch out what I thought the dimensions of the door might be and just see how that could relate with my content. I knew I wanted to do birds. Next, uh, I colored this and I picked my favorite thumbnail and with my dimensions that I thought the door might be, I created this design with the colors that I thought I would have in mind for it. When I got the door, I realized that my dimensions were a lot different than the door itself. I brought an image that I took with my phone of the door, imported it into Procreate and adjusted my design per the dimensions of that door. I got the door, I needed to paint it the colors that I wanted for the background. After talking to Josh, he said that he didn't have any problems with the door painting it directly with spray paint. So that was where I started the gradient base for my background. Once I had the paint on the door, I brought it down into my studio so it could completely dry. It was a little cold that day. And next, I knew I needed to to print out my design so I could transfer it to the door. I printed out two black and white versions of my illustration. One's a little bit darker than the other. I wanted to see which worked best with my projector and so that's why I have two versions here. Uh, my projector only is a five by five square so I had to fit it into that dimension. I would recommend cutting your paper a little bit larger than that. It makes it a lot easier to adjust when you're transferring it to your canvas. This is my projector setup. This is actually a tracer projector in my studio here. It gave me an idea of where things would be placed. So I used a pencil and traced my drawing onto the door. I used GAC 100, which is a golden product to paint over my pencil marks so they wouldn't move around as well as helping my paint adhere to the spray paint it would provide a little bit of a base there here you see me kind of sanding or roughing up the GAC 100 just to give it a little bit of tooth so the paint will stick to the door and here I'm masking off the tree limbs Initially, I was going to use an airbrush that I got for my birthday to spray uh, some of this, some of the background elements. And the compressor that I have just didn't have enough oomph, and I didn't know that until after I'd masked this off. So I just had to use a little problem solving and just went ahead and painted it with a paintbrush. And here I am just setting down base colors to get the layout of the birds and have a base for glazing more colors on top. You could also use a gesso in these areas because then you'd have a white base. I chose not to do that, but uh, it worked out okay. I probably had more layers than you might need otherwise, but it worked out okay. This process took me several days. I expected it to be a lot quicker with an airbrush, but since I had to paint this, it probably took me about two weeks to finish this project. And I definitely can say it's a lot more helpful to have bigger brushes for bigger areas, cover a lot more ground, and you have smoother brush strokes. And I decided for the tree itself, I was just going to paint in lines to represent bark, not try to put too much, too much detail or shading into that. Um, the birds really are the highlight of this and 
since this is a bathroom stall door, I think it's just fun to have lots of color and I think the kids will be loving going to, to the bathroom. So like noted before, this is a bathroom stall door. This is actually gonna be a girl's bathroom door and I envision girls having their imaginations flourishing because of the cool bathrooms that they'll have. I encourage you, if you're an artist and you wanna do cool projects like this, to partner with the other artists in your community. Oftentimes the funnest projects are come from other artists who want to share art in their community and just that camaraderie that comes with painting together. So don't be afraid of a project like this. Embrace it and learn from it because that's really these are the best projects to learn from. Here is the final artwork. This is the first time the store has seen the light of day in two weeks. Uh, I'm super excited for the kids to go back to school. And at this point, we don't know when they're gonna go back to school because we're in the midst of a quarantine. But I think this will spark their imaginations and be really fun for them when they return to school. Thanks for following along with this artistic journey. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed watching this video. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to be in the know for other creative content, hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell so you can get that notification. If you think your friends would enjoy this, share this video, man. And until next time, keep painting and keep cultivating those creative vibes. See ya.